Hello, this is Randy Allen from Engraving Concepts, Arlington, Texas. Today, we are going to evaluate the cleaning and the maintenance of the Epilogue Fusion M2 laser system. The Epilogue laser system comes with a very thorough owner's manual. Section 10 of the owner's manual of the Fusion system covers the cleaning and maintenance of the machine. It goes over the thorough cleaning of the optic lens and the mirror that is in the x-axis carriage. It covers the white lithium grease that is used to lubricate the linear bearings. It also covers wiping down the y-axis round rails on each side of the system and goes over how to use a wire brush to clean the exhaust ports in the back of the machine. Okay, so now with the machine powered off, we're able to simply reach out and move the lens carriage manually. We can grab the lens carriage and move that out so it's easier to access the lens area. Now that we have easy access to the lens and the mirror, we're going to remove the lens assembly from the x-axis carriage by loosening the three silver captive screws on the front side of the lens assembly. This particular unit has the eView camera module and that is the black cable just above the lens area. So you want to make sure the machine is powered off before you unplug the eView camera module cable. Once that is loose, we can pull that straight forward to the front for easy access for cleaning. Now once we have removed this assembly, we're going to take a closer look at the lens. This is the top of the lens that is mounted into the assembly by four Allen screws. And then this is the bottom of the lens. We want to make sure that this lens is super dry and clean. Also, if you ever pull the screws out to replace the lens, make sure you're putting this in the bubble side up. So the bubble side always faces up and the flat side down. I'd also like to point out that some of you that have first generation fusion systems might not have a lens that is screwed down with these Allen screws. Some of your lenses might be glued into the assembly. You can continue to use that or get a replacement from tech support. Now we're ready to clean the lens thoroughly using the lens cleaner that came with the system. We're going to use some cotton swabs and we're going to put a little bit of the lens cleaner on the swab and we're going to wipe down the top of the lens and the bottom of the lens and we want to be careful not to scrub this too hard we want to simply rotate and uh, in a circular motion use plenty of cleaner and when needed uh, use plenty of q-tips we don't want to scratch the surface of that lens we want to be real careful with it so we're going to just be delicate and use as many q-tips as you need to clean the top and bottom surface of the lens Okay, so with our lens uh, assembly pulled forward on the carriage, we can have easy access to the mirror. We're going to loosen the thumb screw at the mirror assembly and slide the mirror out of its bracket. We're going to look for any scratches or leftover residue, and we want to make sure this is clean and dry. Then once we've evaluated the, the mirror, we can slide that back into the amount, and then we're going to gently tighten up on the black thumb screw to be sure that there's no vibration and that's not moving around in motion. So it is true that a little bit of cleaning goes a long way on any laser system. You always want to keep your optics, your lens, and your mirrors clean and free from dust. And then now we're ready to lubricate the bearings. So the linear bearing guide is right behind the belt. This is the bar that runs the length of the x-axis carriage and has all of those screws. And there are actually two grooves that hold the white lithium grease that is included with the laser system. So this white lithium grease that comes with the machine is what we want to apply on the top groove and on the bottom groove of the bearing track. And we recommend that you apply this every three months. So every three months you want to wipe out the old grease and then insert some new grease. And we can do this the length of the carriage and then once we have our uh, lubricant in the length of the carriage with the machine powered off of course, then we can take the lens assembly and move that left and right back and forth then we can work that grease into the bearings as needed. But this is a really strong linear guide that operates at a very fast speed and it's very robust. We just want to keep it clean and lubricated. So in laser engraving sometimes dust will flare up around either side of the lens assembly 
and get caught up on the belt. Uh, so we want to be sure to always keep the x-axis belt clean and free from any dust or residue. And we can use a rag, a shop towel, maybe some water and liquid detergent to just keep that area clean and dry. So now we're ready to reinstall the lens assembly back into the x-axis carriage. When we do this, we want to be sure that we have the uh, crash bar that is located below the lens and that's going to swivel into the up position allowing us to twist that up and slide over the pins that are located on each side of the lens assembly. We simply fold that up, slide that forward and then with the machine powered off of course we want to make sure that the eView camera module plug is plugged back into the assembly and then once we have that plugged up we can make sure we tighten up on all of the three thumb screws on the lens assembly. So in the cleaning and maintenance section of the owner's manual, it talks about cleaning these Y-axis round rails underneath the belt with a simple towel just to keep those dust free and clean. One of the benefits of the new Fusion is the ability to control the airflow. Here in the back of the system, we see the vector grid, the downdraft table, and the blocked air vents. These all connect to one built-in plenum that's easily removed out of the back side of the machine. So you can actually open and close these vents when needed. If you're just cutting, you can use the vector grid. You can use the downdraft table for the most concentrated suction through the stainless steel table, or you can block certain vents depending on which airflow and where on the table you're doing most of your cutting. You'll also want to be sure to use a wire brush to clean the exhaust plenum periodically. We want to get the top exhaust ports and also the exhaust plenum disc ports as well to be sure there is no clogs in any ports along the back of the exhaust. Okay, here we're taking a look at the back of the fusion system where we see the filter and the exhaust ports. Notice on the lower left hand side of the machine we have the power cord. This is the power supply where the power cord plugs into. And there's also a breaker to make note of. And then above the power supply you'll find the control module. So this control module is where you'll find the Ethernet cable and the USB plugs in. And then above the control module is where you'll find a black tag. Now this black tag also contains your serial number. So you want to always have that serial number handy when requesting technical support from the factory or engraving concepts. So here we're going to demonstrate how to remove the back panel of the exhaust. So with those screws removed, we can pull off the whole exhaust plenum. Being able to really clean this thoroughly is crucial to the life of the machine. We want to keep the dust ports along the back clean, free from big dust particles. We want to clean the vents and the hoses as needed. And then we can set that aside. And about that time, we can clean and inspect, if needed, our filter. Now, it's also important to know that you want to be able to get behind your machine effectively. But also, when you're changing out this filter, know that you're going to probably have to pull those exhaust ports off. So we have this filter that can be removed, and there's the size of the filter. You can purchase this at most hardware stores. But you want to keep this filter clean and inspect that to be sure there's no big dust uh, particles getting inside the system. Once clean and inspected, reinstall the exhaust plenum to the back of the system. And with a further look into the Fusion M2 system, we wanted to show how easy it is to remove the quarter panels for service to the machine. So there are two quarter panels on each side, one on the bottom, one on the top. And these quarter panels can be removed easily with an Allen wrench. With a simple quarter turn, you can remove the whole quarter panel. And then once that's removed, we can see the inside of the machine. And this gives us easy access to uh, crucial parts of the machine like alignment, mirrors, and so forth. So with the left side panel removed on both the top and the bottom, we see on the bottom quarter panel the mirror. That is the first mirror that the laser beam contacts when it exits the tube. So this mirror, as we zoom up on this, this mirror has a cover that's magnetic so it can be easily pulled off and replaced as needed. As we remove the cover to inspect the mirror, then we want to loosen the black thumb screw. As we loosen that, we can slide the mirror out for inspection. We want to be sure, again, that it is clean and dry. We don't want any cr cracks or scratches or residue on this mirror. Once we've inspected it, then we can slide that back in its holder. 
and the plate that covers that is simply placed on with a magnet so it will snap right back into place and be sure to tighten the black thumb screw. Now with the side panel removed we're going to see the periscope which is a long tube that goes from the first mirror up to the second mirror up top. Now the alignment goes from that back mirror and the window to the X carriage mirror but as we see that we can pull the magnetic panel off of that mirror and then slide the mirror out for easy access to clean and inspect the mirror as needed. Then we can slide that back into its holder and tighten that down securely. Next we'll move to the mirror that is on the far left side of the x-axis carriage. This mirror is positioned in this holder here and there is a black thumb screw that needs to be loose before we can slide the mirror up out of its assembly. Once this black thumb screw is loose we can use a fingernail to slide the mirror up out of the bracket and then we can expect the lens to be sure it is clean and scratch free. Once we've inspected it, we can slide the mirror back in its bracket and be sure that you tighten the thumb screw down to be sure there's no movement of the mirror in the assembly. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the lead screws. These lead screws are responsible to raise and lower the table inside the machine up and down. There's one lead screw in the back left corner and the back right corner. There's another lead screw. And these lead screws can also be found near the front of the machine, one on the left side, and then there's another on the front right side. These lead screws in real humid conditions might need a little lubricant. Otherwise you just want to keep them clean. You can use a rag or a towel. But in real humid conditions you might want to put a bead of white lithium grease that came with the system on each of the lead screws. Other than that they're pretty robust and won't need any other maintenance. So this has been a overview of the cleaning and maintenance section of the Epilogue Fusion Laser System, the M2. If you have any further questions, please call technical support at 303-215-9171 or email, that's tech, T-E-C-H, at epiloguelaser.com. Thank you very much.